Hello, how the devil are you? I did some kind of comedy uh, look off, look into the screen type thing there for a second. Uh, friends, fans might recognise that as a bit of a joey moment. Um, so I've been a bit quieter in terms of um, recording videos uh, this week, but it's uh, just been a bit more tricky with COVID isolation. Um, it ends up being the case that essentially I just have to uh, isolate for 10 days, which is fun. So I've still got another well, today and tomorrow in isolation and then I'm out at the weekend. So um, that's been fun. Um, so uh, would have not been going to work and things has been well, I wouldn't I don't think it's fair to say there's less stuff going around in my mind. I'm definitely uh, starting now as I come to the end of my isolation period and I'll be due back at work at the beginning of next week to kind of face the uh, the madness of everything that's been going on. Um, so that's definitely starting to pop back into my head again. But, um, you know, a lot of that comes into the kind of mind management stuff uh, that I talk about quite a lot anyway. And that's, uh, you know, a kind of ongoing long term project anyway. And I'm certainly no, um, I'm not the only one. So I thought I'd do something slightly different uh, with this one. Uh, this popped into my head when I was uh, just taking the, the dog for a bit of fresh air to the deserted fields next door, don't worry. Um, and I'm basically trying to build a bit more of a, a reading habit. So this has been a bit of a kind of long held ambition. I do enjoy reading, but struggled to build it into my day. Um, and alongside a kind of parallel effort to reduce the amount of social media that I consume. Uh, there were the classic doom scrolling on Facebook and Twitter and things and the effects that that has on your mindset. <clears throat> I'm trying to just uh, build so social media largely out in terms of uh, using it on my phone and kind of replace that, I suppose, with reading. So I thought I would talk a little bit just for the next uh, few minutes or so um, about the latest one that I've just finished and I think perhaps I'll I'll try and do this um, if it's at all of interest as I finish books, which I don't, I don't do that quickly, so don't be anticipating one of these every few days. Um, so the last book I've finished was actually um, this one, so it's probably back to front, it may not be, uh, but it's Mind Games by Neville Southall. And um, I'll just quickly tell you how this came on my radar because um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm not a football fan. Um, and this is one of these kind of um, retired footballer type efforts, um, but it's very, very good would be the first thing I would say. So this actually uh, came to me through a, a gift I was given by my um, better half. And it was a book subscription, an online book subscription for three months. And you basically just tell them what you're interested in and they send you a kind of surprise book each month, which is quite good. So um, I was really uh, looking to get some stuff, you know, kind of personal development, coaching, um, self-improvement, that kind of thing. Um, and so that was what they sent me. And I'd never actually come across um, th this book before uh, on my sort of previous research. Um, but essentially, you know, it even says on the front, not your usual ex-footballer biography and all the better for it. So Neville Southall, my understanding is, was a, was a goalkeeper. Um, and I think he might, he might have retired sort of late 90s uh, or something so I do I, I do recognise him and the name so he was a goalkeeper, played at a very high level uh, played for many years for Everton and uh, also at international level with Wales and he's kind of boiled down a lot of his life lessons both from football and outside of football um, into, uh, into this book essentially and it kind of goes through it's divided into uh different chapters discussing different topics and there's a whole range of 17 chapters in total and he talks about things like confidence pressure fear abuse failure um and then goes right through sort of racism homophobia addiction alcohol social media helping others uh, lgbtq plus issues um, mental health and also aging as well so it's a very very kind of diverse uh, run through um, and it's really kind of I, I think part of the reason I like it is because I'm not uh, I'm not an academic you know I'm never someone who's wanted to rush off and, and do research I uh, try and conduct my myself um, professionally in, a, in an evidence-based fashion so I have a good enough understanding of research to um, uh, to be able to tell whether a study is any good 
um, and I know the kind of general approach of research, but I've never had any mind to really get heavily involved in it. And really, it's kind of a it's kind of a nuts and bolts approach to a lot of these different things and the lessons he's learned uh, from his life in uh, football as a player, playing at a high level, and also what he's learned in his life in general as well. And um, also, I understand, I think Neville Southall now, he's got a very big presence on uh, social media and tries to kind of use his social media as a force for good. He talks a lot about the kind of toxic environment that there can be on social media sometimes, which I definitely see a lot of, uh, you know, even just in the in the medical uh, social media sphere is very, very toxic at the moment. And it's a very, very difficult place to uh, to navigate. And he talks a lot about this, but he tries to use his significant platform as a way to help people, uh, which I think is, is massively admirable. And he gives um, people that wouldn't normally have easy access to, uh, to, to a big uh, microphone essentially to come and talk about um, uh, you know whether it be LGBTQ plus issues or uh, whatever it may be or if there's someone who's just looking for help with something so he's got a very low threshold to uh, uh, to either speak to them himself or to connect them with someone who will be able to help um, so really 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 good really really good book worth a look if you're into that kind of thing um, there's a few things I'm quite a big fan of the number three when it comes to like lessons learned and action points and things I think any more than three and it starts to get a bit diluted um, but my, my three kind of key learning points from it that I've scribbled down are you know you really need to be open to learning uh, and that's not just your own development that's also you know, the people that you come across as well because everyone is unique and different and um, you know if you don't understand something about someone then you know that's probably a sign that you need to educate yourself so if you feel able to you can ask that person about it or actually just take yourself off and you know do a search get a book um i think that must be the uh the, the reason why the the google adverts at the moment are kind of encouraging people to be a bit more curious about stuff that people don't understand do some proper research on it um if you don't know what proper research is then you need to figure out how do you you know how do you figure out what's a reliable source as well i think that's a really important um under taught skill these days is a critical appraisal essentially um, and that's really important but be open to, uh, to 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 learning about what's going on around you essentially and um, value and recognize the things that life has taught you so this is a big thing you know, this is the whole basis on which this book is written and that he's uh, kind of boiling down all his experiences in his life and his career uh, to try and help the reader essentially so uh, you know take a moment to actually think back and say what has your life so far taught you um, and how can you kind of apply that for the greater good and then last but not least this is essentially in the opening pages of the book uh, where it says this book is dedicated to anyone that suffers whatever their age gender sexuality race or situation please know that you are not alone and i think that is a really great message to leave it on essentially is that you know no matter how terrible things may seem at that moment in time you are never alone um and uh you know assume that other people are in the same situation um and please go and talk to someone about it uh if you're finding things difficult so yeah, so that's something a little bit different. Um, I might try and do this again. Uh, it might be a while until I finish my next book. It's a bit of a kind of chunky one, uh, a bit harder to read than this one. Um, but you know, if there's any suggestions about um, anything else that you want to want me to to get into on here, then I'm uh, happy to do that as well. But in the meantime, see you later.